This is my brother Pete, and this is his radio station. W-A-R-T, Ward Radio, Wellsville. Good morning, gut buckets. Time to wipe the crud from your eye sockets and bite the wind of another Wednesday. Looking at our traffic report, the shortcut behind the blowtorch house is moving quite nicely. Sure, it's only a Crepstar 2000 walkie-talkie with the transmit button taped down. But with the right kind of antenna, no one within a five-mile radius is safe. From around the world to your backyard, hear it first on Wart News. Today's top story, Mr. Fred Hurley has hemorrhoids. (laughs) Back to you, my little Viking. Thanks, Hurley. In other news, the international adult conspiracy has struck again. Wart had everything you'd want from a radio station. Everything but music. Music just wasn't important to Pete. Every so often, somebody would call in with a request. Wart! Hey dude, can you play Marmalade Cream? It's my favorite song. And he would always say the same thing. Get a like, jerkweed! He had a favorite smell and a favorite star and a favorite internal organ. But what he didn't have was a favorite song. He just never cared enough to find one he could call his own. But as he was about to find out, sometimes you don't find a favorite song. Sometimes it finds you. You know the feeling you get after you hear your favorite song for the first time? All you want to do is play it again and again, so it stays stuck in your head forever. Well, what if you could only hear it once, and that was it? What would you do? Our story begins on the subject of scabs. Hello, and welcome to Scab Talk. I'm here with a very special guest, Meter Man Mel Ratner. Mel... What brings you to Scab Talk? Well, I'm here to read your electricity meter. Is it down here? Upstairs. But before you leave, are there any interesting scabs you'd like to share with us? Oh, yeah. I got one shaped like a dump truck. Want to see? Sure. Looks like we've got us a call. Hello, Scab Talk. Hello, Pete. Wow, I can't believe I got through. My name is Miss Fingerwood. I'm your math teacher. And I just called to let you know that if you're late for my class again, the odds of your passing will increase to a 450 to 1 ratio. (laughs) That's about all the time we've got. Thanks for picking Scab Talk, Mel. Oh, thank you. If a 10-year-old boy has to ride his bicycle... 1.3 1.3 miles to school at a top speed of 15.4 miles per hour. How can you make it in four and a half minutes? Hmm? Shortcut! If he had had just an extra two minutes to get to school, none of what happened would have happened. But I guess fate has a way of putting you in the right place at just the right time. Alas.
As he raced toward school, a strange new feeling raced through him, and suddenly it hit him. It wasn't supposed to happen. He wasn't supposed to care. But as the feeling blasted through his heart, he knew nothing could ever be the same. He had a favorite song, a song he could call his own. After he heard it, the only thing he could think about was hearing it again. The only problem. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Was that nobody was home. Anybody home? And no one was around. And even worse, no one had seen what Pete had seen. The only proof that the song had ever existed at all was one shiny little piece of plastic. It wasn't much, but it gave him enough hope to keep searching. Mom used the metal plate in her head to help scan the airwaves for the song. While Pete's personal superhero, Artie, the strongest man in the world, began spanning the globe, trying to track down the original sound waves of the missing song. Meanwhile, Pete was on his own as he tried to track down the song in his brain. If you know it, dial five 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 four fast. Because as each second passed, each note of the song became harder and harder to remember. Do you know it? Yeah, yeah, I know the name of it. It's called Get a Life Brain Drain. <laughs> you worm. There was only one thing left for Pete to do: wait until night when the reception was best, climb to the roof, and point his Kreb Star 211 toward the sky. Come on, please be out there, please. He tried AM first, then FM. But his song was nowhere, and everyone else's songs were everywhere. Da 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 da. Come on, please. Pete finally had to face the truth. The only place the song existed in the world was in his own head. And if he didn't do something soon, it would be lost forever. He had one last hope. When mom and dad heard that Pete wanted to experience the joy of playing a musical instrument, they were thrilled. Of course, they were kind of hoping he'd play the clarinet. Instead. Pete chose a Kreb Star 3000 Eviscerator. He had no idea how to play it, but if he ever wanted to hear his song again, he'd have to figure it out and fast. Pete began his quest by discovering one of the most powerful forces known to man: feedback. He showed me what it could do with a little demonstration. Audi. The next discovery, the mighty E chord, which, when played properly, will blow the lint out of an innie like a cannon. Then came the whammy bar, which made a sound that, for some reason, affected Artie like deadly kryptonite. Powers useless, growing weaker. <laughs> With the song fading fast, Pete desperately slammed together everything he knew, and finally stumbled across the biggest discovery of all: the sacred riff of his song. Stops doing it. 
Pete had done all he could on his own. Now, he needed a band. Pete's band made its North American debut live over Wart Radio. On bass guitar, her head may be filled with numbers, but her veins throb with gasoline. She's Elma Cooter Fingerwood. Heart times soul equals rock and roll. On drums, a kid who's wanted in 21 states for the crime of rockin', he's Clem Mutton Chop Linnell. My daddy was a rattlesnake, and my mama wore a six gun. On lead guitar, he reads your meters, now he's ready to rock your world. He's lightning, Mel Ratner. Oh, sorry. Man, my brain was flipping like a pancake. And on rhythm guitar, I'm Pete, Thunderball Wrigley. And together, we make up the blowholes. Count us down, Cooter. Uh, 1.1, a 1.2, a 1.3. Let's rock! With the help of Cooter's calculations, Thunderball figured that if they kept playing his three chords at the current rate of 11 riffs per minute, the rest of his song, stuck somewhere in his brain, would splurt out by the weekend. But whoever said that math was an exact science? Thunderball, do you think we could maybe play some other song? I know the backbeat to one is the loneliest number. No, that's not why we're here, remember? We're here to find the song. But there's an almost infinite number of other songs out there, Thunderball. Come on, Pete. Let's keep rocking in a free world. The blowholes were on the verge of blowing up. To save the band and save his dream, Pete did what his hero Abe Lincoln would have done. I've had enough. I'm going to put an end to this. The Fred Hurley way. Poor Dad. He knew that if he didn't stop the band, the international adult conspiracy would do it for him. But if there's one thing that our dad hates more than being the bad guy, it was Bills. Big Bills. W-A-R-T Ward Radio So, you don't like the taste of coffee. But you drink it anyway. Is that right? Uh, Yeah. Pete, it's time we had a little talk. You know, father to son. That's okay. Artie and I already had that talk. (gasps) (sighs) No, no, no. I'm talking about the blowholes. Is there anywhere else you could jam? Well, then I'm sorry, son. You can't play here anymore. I, I just can't afford it. My electricity bills have gone right through the roof. So unless you figure out a way to pay me the $700 a month on this bill, I'm afraid you're going to have to call it quits. I'm sorry, son. Uh, Don't worry, there's lots of other songs out there. You'll find one. That concludes our wordcast for this evening. I guess I'll go back to my stamp collection. Well, I guess I'll see you in class Monday. We're doing fractions. Wart? Hi. Can you play Marmalade Cream? Get a life, jerkweed. If you can... I'll give you five bucks. Yeah, we can play it. 
Thanks. Wellsville, are you ready to rock? Then call Wart, and the Blowholes will play your favorite song. If you make a play, only five bucks a song. And if we can't play it, we'll pay you. It was a risky move. But the only way for the blowholes to keep rocking was to pay Dad's electric bill. And the way Pete figured it, since they were broke, why not get the whole town to pay the bill for them? Smells like math spirit! Five, six, seven, hit it! Mama laid green, so sweet in between. A mama laid cream, it's a tangerine dream. Before long, requests began rolling in on the wart line from all over town. I'll give you like 30 bucks if you play your Fill Me Up Buttercup. It's a real Hi, could you play Wango Tango by Mr. Ted Nugent? Freebird! 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 And now, a long distance dedication from the kids on Cranston Street going out to. The man who saves our lives every summer, Mr. Tasty. We miss you, Tasty, wherever you are. I'm looking down the street where we lived, and it's lonely. Summers we spent always seeing you smile makes me wonder. Time went. I feel alone now that you're gone, gone with the summer wind. The blowholes were on a roll. The way things were going, they could have played forever. Unfortunately, one hemorrhoid sufferer had heard enough. All right, you mutant. It's time to raise the stakes a little. You play my song, I give you a hundred bucks. You can't play it, you pull the plug. What's your poison, buttweed? Surfing bum, surfing fun. The band was baffled until Artie saved the day. That's my boy. Woo! Fred Hurley, you just had your clock clean. Honey, Woo! stop jumping around. You're blocking the signal. Well, they're going to do it, Joyce. I never thought they could pull it off. Gee, I, I should have told them the bill was $1,000. Oh. Come on, Wellsville. We're only 100 bucks away. Who's going to be the lucky caller to put us over the top? I am. I look in your eyes. I see a light shining bright from the sky. The stars can't compare with the glow of your hair. And the beauty I feel when you're holding me tight. I dream of the day not far away. Well, we won't have to run You're dancing so slow And I already know You're my only one Remember when we first heard our song, Joyce? You painted my world You painted my life with love The ground is all so the canvas you need You painted my love It should have been one of the greatest moments in Pete's ten-year-old life. Instead, it ended up being one of his worst. Seeing how happy the song made Mom and Dad suddenly made Pete realize how much he missed his song. He knew the band wouldn't understand, but he had to leave. He was through playing other people's songs. It was time to play his song. And if he was going to find it, he knew where he had to go.
But when he got there, all that was left was one single solitary note. That was all he could remember. Note. Don't stop rocking, Thunderball! How'd you guys find me? We just followed the note. Well, you wasted your time. My song is dead. Rock and roll never dies, Thunderball. Bite me, Clem. Maybe you've been trying too hard to find it. Why don't you let the song find you again? He had no idea what Mel was talking about. But as he walked over to the exact spot where he had first felt the feeling, something strange came over him. The song had come home. As the music echoed through the night, Pete didn't care if the whole world knew his song was around. Even the entire universe could listen in. The song was his, no matter who else heard it. And now that it had found him again, he was going to make sure he never, ever let it go. Nobody knows, nobody.